Hello, and welcome to Combining Ideas, Episode 1. So I've been reading a couple books recently, Why Nations Fail, Animal Farm. I've just started a new one called The Case for Job Guaranteed. Now, when I say I've read these books, I do mean I listen to them on audiobook, because obviously I'm learning to read with War and Peace, but I, I just listen on audiobook. Combining all three books together... If we use the Why Nations Fail template, their basic idea is that extractive institutions make a small minority very rich and the majority obviously poorer than that small minority, the ruling elites, basically. The entire system is set up to continue the power system that gave the ruling elites power. Right, So they stop and hinder creative destruction, which would allow and help more people become successful and rich, so to speak. Because any kind of change to the system could threaten their power. And that is in contrast with a inclusive institution where the power structures are spread across many different people so one person can't have a monopoly so to speak they go into it obviously in a lot more detail it's a very interesting book and if i try to explain it i'm probably going to get this wrong but something like you have like a trifecta where one source of power can't enact anything without the other two agreeing to it and the other two would never agree so much or so little as to diminish their own power within the three. Because if one becomes more powerful or one becomes more weak, then they no longer have power. That's really confusing. It's probably wrong. But in general, in general, <laughs> extractive institutions make the ruling elite rich by extracting resources. Inclusive institutions makes everyone rich by spreading power, which means that no one can try and siphon off wealth because of their power, let's say. Okay? So, using that lens to then read Animal Farm was quite interesting because when I first started reading it, I thought it was a book about communism or a critique on the communist way and, you know, the kind of, I guess, the rise in that kind of, you know, Stalin or Kim Jong-il, where they're like all, everyone else is having a shit time in the name of communism, but they're like hung up in their palaces doing, doing whatever, you know? So that's what I kind of initially thought the book was about. But because I had just read Why Nations Fail, listening to the book this time gave it this whole new filter almost where it 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 wasn't only a comment on communist russia it it was just about the ruling elite in general and really how extractive institutions even after rebellion this is something that the the book why nations fail says it's not just a rebellion that will change the the political institution or the economic institution it's it's a whole other host of factors they get into the host of factors but i think animal farm shows what happens when all the factors aren't kind of thought about it's easier and there is an incentive for the ruling class to keep the extractive institutions running because you know it's it's better for them and and it's hard to get out of those kind of structural cycles and so yeah i i don't know it for me, it had less to do with communism and more to do with just political structures and revolution and the dangers of revolution and letting the kind of, this is going to sound really weird, the kind of educated experts become the, become the ruling class. I just finished the book and it's not always mentioned. Obviously, the whole story is actually quite fast. It's not. It's it's, it's a fast-paced kind of thing, uh, kind of book. That no scene is kind of held onto for, for, for that long. But even like in the space of a year, the animals don't have a 
a very good memory of what came you know at the beginning of the year versus to the end of the year or maybe a kind of representation of generations i don't know but yeah really they ha- they have a real hard time under- like remembering and understanding uh, whereas the pigs don't and that you know uh, the sheep whenever you know things go in a way where where you think oh this is it the animals are going to rebel because this time the pigs have gone too far you, it's you know the dogs are there yes but the ones that shut everyone up and make it too late to to protest are the sheep and the sheep just bleat the same things basically for the entire book and and the, their message is always the same and it just goes on and on for a very long time until by the time it's over no one can argue and you know the the rationalizations of squeal the what i'd like to call the media pig kind of disperse the crowd so to speak you know and and the dogs are obviously there for extra measure but no one really no animal is really intelligent enough to create an argument and speak up early enough to to stop the pigs gaining all this power and by the time and by the time they go too far most of the animals had forgotten you know the the first maxims after the rebellion and again are just very stupid and easily swayed i mean if this is a comment on society in general george orwell did not think the majority of people in society were smart people not in like a bad way i don't think you know like boxer is is a very respectable character and if he is an an archetype of a type of person in society it's a very respectable archetype i think like you know he's basically the good guy throughout the entire book almost (laughs) but he's he's not that bright like he can remember a b c d i think and then if he learns e f g h he forgets a b c d so he he's he's not a bright character and none of the good characters in it if you could call them good or bad but you know we we know the concept so none of the good characters in it are that bright the brightest of the good characters is benjamin this is spoilers for anyone that hasn't read it but he is portrayed as an intelligent character who doesn't want to meddle he is i believe george orwell's version of the intelligent ones that probably could say something but are too nihilistic to hope for a better future or or something (laughs) at least that's how i see it so anyway i so i read why nations fail then read animal farm and i just finished that and i needed and i needed to listen to something else and i found this book a case for jobs guaranteed now it's not normally my kind of cup of tea as it's very much kind of let's call it social social socially charged you know kind of bernie sanders kind of thinking i'd I'd say or jeremy corbyn's and and I'm listening to it, and everything she's saying is, you know, it's 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 valid. Firstly, it it wasn't as, you know, evidence based as I would have liked it to be. It made assertions about things, and what evidence it did kind of refer to was very surface only. You know, reference referenced in history, but to show that it had been done before, but not how well it worked. It kind of sounded, I I don't know how great of a case it was, it was more of a how it would work kind of book. And the way that it described how it would work, you know, from the evidence that it did kind of say, it made it seem very feasible, you know, and it, it seemed like a good idea and the figures it was talking about how popular it is you know seems that it's it's in america anyway it's popular on both sides of the political spectrum 
in general, it seems like a very popular idea. Because of the other two books, Why Nations Fail and Animal Farm, I kept thinking about how it could all go wrong. You know, if you if you take the story of Animal Farm, it started off with a really good idea. You know, animals farming for themselves, not being whipped by humans, and it, it all sounded great and everyone was into it. Now, we, if we kind of put that filter over a job guarantee, then, yeah, I mean, it does sound like a good idea to make sure everyone is guaranteed a job, okay? But, again, going back to Animal Farm, I just kept thinking, all right, well, how can this be kind of manipulated in a way where there is some kind of extraction of wealth to the powerful or the people involved, you know? Now, they do talk about how it's funded by big government, but organized on a local level, which I like because it kind of then relates to Why Nations Fail's idea of a large spread of power. Now, although the money is coming in from big government, if it's organized within communities, then the power is spread and diverse and it's not all coming f- like the organization and the money isn't coming from one place so you're less likely to get corruption i suppose so the thought in me that you know you can't just come up with a great idea that sounds good for the majority it sounds like what you actually have to do is not only come up with the great idea that is good for the majority, but also how the the good idea needs to implement systems that spread the power to make sure that it's not corruptible, but also how to overcome the hurdle of the established power. Because there's no way that the animals could transition from Jones being the head of the farm to the animals being the head of the farm without kicking out Jones, okay? Jones, like... As far as Jones is concerned, he gets the bad end of that that stick because he no longer has a house, no longer has an income, and so it's no good for him. And so if the ruling class are happy with the status quo, I find it hard to see how new legislation that helps everyone and not just the ruling class gets into law. Because obviously the ruling class are the ones that make the law. So why would they give themselves a bad deal? I find it very unlikely that anyone would willingly give up their own wealth to make someone else more wealthy. It sounds like something that people should do, but like in practice, I don't think anyone would. Without rebellion, I don't see how it's going to happen. But then if you have a rebellion, you will then get into this kind of uh, new system where there's a new ruling elite and how is the majority going to stop the new ruling elite basically turning into the old ruling elite just like an animal farm so that is those are my thoughts from those three books i suppose we'll leave it there i hope you enjoyed my ramble like and subscribe click that notification button and and uh, whatever